This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here is the latest generation Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga. This is a 12.5 inch model. Last time we looked at it was December of 2013. This is a second generation model, and in fact, it happens to be running Windows 10. Exciting times. Windows 10 just came out. Now PCs are shipping with it, and as, as you'll discover here, I, most manufacturers are not doing a hardware refresh because there's no new hardware out there. So they're just putting Windows 10 on it instead. And we're going to see what it looks like right here. And what's changed with the second generation ThinkPad Yoga 12.5. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, the second generation of the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 12. This is a convertible laptop with pen that we liked quite a lot when we reviewed it. Oh about a year and a half ago or so now. And Lenovo has refreshed it finally with second generation internals. In this case, that means going up to Intel 5th generation Broadwell CPUs inside. Now, not a lot else has changed here, so we're not going to do a very long and drawn out review for this one. Pretty much everything we said for the, in the first generation still holds true here. You just get the updated internals, and of course, now you'll be able to get it with Windows 10 pre-installed. Or if you already have one, it's real easy just to download and install Windows 10. All the drivers and stuff are in place. It's working pretty well. What this is known for is the 360 degree hinge and it has the lift and lock keyboard. Unlike some of the yogas that are for consumers, uh, like the Yoga 3 Pro, the Yoga 2 Pro, this one actually has a keyboard where see the keys retract, they go flat, they go flush, they're not sticking up anymore, they don't move, trackpad locks, so it doesn't feel squirrely on your fingers. So that's back again from the first generation. It's still certainly a good idea if you're going to have your keys exposed. At least get them out of the way. It's harder to accidentally tear them off. It doesn't feel so weird, that sort of thing. The lift and lock mechanism adds a little thickness and weight, but at 0.74 inches, it's not exactly what we would call thick. In fact, it's fairly slim. And it weighs 3.48 pounds, call it three and a half pounds. So not too bad for a 12.5 inch ultrabook. So yeah, 12.5 inch, not the usual 13.3 inch display on this guy. So for those of you who find 13.3 just as small as you can stand to go, keep that in mind. This is obviously just 0.8 inches smaller in size. The screen, I, I don't find that it really is much of a difference. Honestly, I don't mind it that much. But if I was using this for editing video and, and image files day in and day out, then I would probably want the bigger screen. Honestly, then I start to crave a 15 inch anyway though. Notice there's not much glare going on because it has the matte coating on it. That's what Lenovo does with a lot of their ThinkPads these days. So it controls glare pretty well. It also measures 372 nits of brightness. Now this is the full HD model with the Wacom Pen option. So there's a 1366 by 768 for less money, but we're talking about the full HD model here. And if you order from Lenovo's website, then if you get full HD, you get the pen, which lives in a little silo in the corner, just like last generation, with a little red on the top. This one doesn't have the button like some Wacom pens, but you can use Wacom pens for tablet PCs that do have the button if you wish. And if you want something a little bit bigger, because this is kind of teeny, not exactly toothpicky, but small. And it does have a single button on the side right over here. Pressure sensitivity, palm rejection, you get all that stuff with the Wacom pen. And it, they're one of the oldest manufacturers of active digitizers and pens for laptops. So they're pretty well established, shall we say. Drivers are in good order. Our high-end model costs around $1,500. It does start around $880. For $880, you get a Core i3, 4 gigs of RAM, and a 500 gig spinning hard drive. And that 1366 by 768 display that supports touch, but not the pen. Our model is pretty well decked out. Core i5-5300U instead of the 4200U. A minor difference there. It's 2.3 gigahertz. Again, Intel Broadwell 5th generation. Intel HD 5500 graphics, integrated graphics for all models of this. 8 gigs of RAM, and we have a SSD inside. You can get this with 128 gig SSD. The Intel 180 gig or 256 gig. There are a variety of options. If you do, do go with the hard drive option, you'll get a 16 gig caching drive to speed up Windows boot times and application load times. And we'll splice in a photo of the internal so you can see it, but it's 
experts will tell you, SATA 3, 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive, there's a bay inside for that, so that's pretty easy to source and find if you want to upgrade or switch to an SSD from a hard drive later on. We have two slots, PCIe slots. One is for that caching drive, and I know some of you like to try to turn that into a second drive bay, and it depends on the Lenovo BIOS on a given machine as to how well it supports it. You should be able to actually put that drive bay to some use. The other slot's used by the Intel Wi-Fi 7265 AC card, so that gets a little bit of an upgrade from the 7260. Good wireless card that one is. Battery sealed inside, 4 cell, 47 watt hour, just like the last generation, and RAM is soldered on board. So when you order it, you can order with 4 or 8 gigs. Get the amount of RAM that you want because you can't upgrade it yourself later. This keyboard is backlit, by the way, and it is a superb keyboard. Think pad keyboards usually are good. We have pretty deep key travel for an Ultrabook right here. Light, nice damped keys, positive feel. It just it feels fantastic. And of course, we have the eraser stick pointer, known as the nav point right here, and the trackpad with the buttons up top for those of you who are using the nav pad right there. And I've just changed our web browser by tapping. And running Windows 10 here, you can see we still have our usual fairly full-featured ThinkPad trackpad driver settings right here. You've got control over your clicking, your scrolling, your gestures, your advanced stuff right there. So all that goodness is still here. We also have a Wacom control panel for calibrating the pen to the display. Lenovo Think Vantage, Lenovo Microphone, the usual stuff that you would expect to see on a Lenovo laptop. Ports are the same as the last gen model. We have a USB 3.0 port right here, your combo mic headphone jack. This is where we plug in the 45 watt compact AC adapter. And if you pull this little rubber do door off, this is for the one link dock that Lenovo sells separately, which is a pretty handy docking station. Same beefy big hinges on the back, and this is your ventilation. And on this side, another USB 3.0 port. We have a mini HDMI port, SD card slot, rotation lock, volume controls, and that's your power button right there. So in case you are using it in tablet mode, presentation mode, tent mode, what have you, you still have access to those buttons. And once again, the pen lives in the silo right over here. To open this up and perform surgery, if you want to do upgrades or eventually replace the battery, if you feel that it's wearing out, it's pretty easy. Just standard Phillips head screws around the edges over here. Undo those and then work your fingernail around the joint and you can pop off the bottom and have access to those internals that we showed you. Nominally, obviously, the battery is sealed inside since you have to undo screws and take off the cover to get to it. It's not one of those ones that you pop out. If you're interested in that, Lenovo has the ThinkPad X250, also 12.5 inch, a bit thicker. Very good keyboard, also no pen option with that one, but otherwise pretty much a similar animal for those of you who are looking for just a traditional laptop design that opens up flat, but doesn't do these neat tricks like our yoga does. It yogas, goes into presentation mode, or you can flip it and use it in tent mode, or you can flatten it out and use it as a tablet. So since we've got Windows 10 here, we do not have the main live tile interface, at least not where in desktop mode. It does support continuum, so if you rotate it into a different position, you can have it either automatically change to tablet-friendly mode or ask you every time that, that you switch. And our start menu is back right there. So pretty friendly, pretty easy to use, less scary probably for those of you who are still using Windows 7 right there. So let's flip her over and... And then you can see right down in the corner, it's asking me, do I want to keep using it in PC mode or I want to switch to tablet mode? So when you say yes to tablet mode, it tends to full screen things and the little closed boxes go away. And you can use your task switcher down here to switch between things that you're running. And when you move it out of this mode, you can put it back into desktop mode automatically. So when you put it into tablet or presentation mode, you get the idea. And obviously our anti-glare screen picks up some glare. You can see it's picking it up right now. Speaking of the display, brightness is great. Color, mm, well, not too impressive right there. As you can see, 
Adobe RGB, we only have 52% of coverage. And if we go over to our sRGB, we have 69% of sRGB compared to the 95 to 100% we see on a lot of other Ultrabooks in this price range. The ThinkPad Yoga has never gotten a really high color gamut display. That doesn't mean it isn't pleasing to look at. It certainly is. Colors look nice and vibrant here, and it's enjoyable for watching movies and all that sort of thing. But for those of you who are doing professional graphics work, which would be a temptation given the pen right here, I, you're not going to see the full color gamut. For those of you who are interested in this kind of design with a pen and you want the higher color gamut, you might consider the HP Spectre X360. And for those of you who don't know it, the HP Spectre X360 is, here it is, 13.3 inch Ultrabook also with pen, though the pen is sold separately. If you're interested in this Macdown, just put it in the comments and we can do that. So how about benchmarks? Again, this is the Core i5-5300U Broadwell, a latest generation CPU clocked at 2.3 GHz to boost to 2.9 GHz. And you can see our PC Mark 7 score right there, 5308, which is pretty darn good actually for a Core i5. And that was benchmarked under Windows 10, Geekbench 3, 3221 for the single core test, 6112 for the multi-core test. Again, that's a strong showing. PC Mark 8 Home, it did 2801, which again, par for the course for one of these machines, that's pretty much what you would expect. And it computed Prime in 18 seconds using W Prime. So it's your typical Core i5 machine that's good for general purpose use if you're taking it for school, for example, thinking about getting yourself a machine to get ready for college. Perfect for MS Office, photo editing, some occasional video editing. Uh, light gaming, you know, all these Ultrabooks with integrated graphics, they are not going to be playing Battlefield 4 on high settings. Sorry, folks. But for some games, particularly older games, you, you'll do well at full 1920 by 1080 resolution at low to medium settings. Today's most demanding games, 1024 by 768 is probably what you're going to have to run those games at and low. So not a gamer, but otherwise pretty capable. It's not a high-end video machine, but it's fine for casual use every so often. It is not intended for CAD work either. Uh, you could do, though, if you're first and second year in college, you could do that. We've got access to the Windows Store right here. In fact, we have some apps like Fresh Paint running. There's also Photoshop Express that's free now, which is a pretty basic version of Photoshop for photo editing, but you can see how the pen works here including pressure sensitivity. I'm doing some light lines. I'm doing heavier lines right there. Pen works fine. It's a nice choice for art. It's a great choice for note takers too. You can use this in portrait mode if you want. If you want to pick it up and hold it like a pad of paper, like so, you can rotate the display. And for those of you who want to use this for note taking and such, this is the Metro or Windows Store version of OneNote that is free and it works just fine with palm rejection. I'm going to rest my hand on the screen. Works just fine. Of course, you can use things like handwriting recognition with this program if you want. You can doodle, you can do equations, all that sort of thing. Light line, heavy line, clear palm rejection and pressure sensitivity here. So you can never go wrong with Wacom when it comes to those features. And now that we moved it back into desktop position and said, okay, we want to use it in desktop mode. Notice now we actually have access to the minimize, the close box. So these apps can actually run just like any other desktop program that you can control in the same way. And you still have access to IE and also the new Edge web browser. And well, here's our Windows 10 walkthrough. So let's play that. Right now we have the speaker set to 60% volume so you can hear the speakers and see how it looks. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is Windows 10. Right this now. is the final version here. Those of us who were in the Windows Insider program got to try it out early, and we're getting the final build about two weeks before the rest of the world will be able to get it. So at 90% volume, it's funny, it doesn't get super duper louder compared to 60%, but at 60% it actually is already fairly loud. So those are pretty 
capable speakers. And Lenovo's website, they mentioned optional, higher quality JBL speakers. So it, when I went through the, the build process to check that out, I didn't actually see that as a selectable option. So that part's a little bit of a mystery to me, but certainly adequate for those times when you watch, want to watch a movie or watch a video here. Works just fine. Since we have the same battery that we had for the first generation Yoga 12 that we reviewed, well, expect a similar battery life. We do have the Intel 5th generation Broadwell CPU, which brings somewhat better battery life. And in our last generation model, we said we averaged about six and a half hours. And that, Windows 10 is actually pretty power efficient too, I'd say. Between Broadwell in here and, and Windows 10, so far with brightness at the 50%, Wi-Fi on, and a mix of productivity kind of work and streaming a 45 minutes, minute episode on Netflix, we actually came closer to seven hours now. So that's not bad. Six hours and 45 minutes, pretty solid there, sometimes hitting the seven hour mark. Not as long as the HP Spectre X360, but it's certainly decent and usable enough. And if you want to go crazy with power savings and set the display to be quite a bit dimmer, because this is a very bright display, 372 nits, you could do that and stretch battery life even farther. So when the, we reviewed the first generation, it was a pretty unusual machine at the time and one of the few that did the yoga thing, the 360 degree and had the pen and was pretty portable and light and durable. Now there is some competition. We have that Spectre X360 I mentioned, the Acer R13, a couple of other machines. How's the Yoga 12 looking now? Well, it's still looking pretty good, particularly if you really want one of the best keyboards available. If you like that matte display, which again, as you can see, isn't completely glare proof, and the usual rugged ThinkPad kind of bang it on the table and you don't even care design. Not bad, not bad at all. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, otherwise known as the ThinkPad 12.5 ThinkPad Yoga. With the lift and lock keyboard, the 360 degree hinge, the Wacom pen, Windows 10 now available coming soon to a ThinkPad Yoga near you. And for those of you who already own one, yes, you can just download and do the upgrade. Easy peasy, works quite well. Not a problem at all. Anyway, still one of the nicest of the compact Ultrabooks with a pen. It does have some competition now from the likes of the HP Spectre X360, and it really depends on what you want there. Do you want the matte display, for example? Do you want something smaller, 12 and a half inch? Anyway, if you're interested in the smackdown between this and the Spectre X360, just let me know in those comments so we can do it. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.